everyone, my name is Jesse Putnam and I'm an applications engineer here at Hawkridge Systems. Today I'm going to be going over the fill pattern tool. You can see I have this sheet metal body here and I created a fill pattern on it using this small star feature up at the top right. So I'm just going to jump right into this tool. I'll use the rollback bar to get rid of the pattern I made and we can start from scratch. I'm also going to look normal to that face. You need to use a planar face for this fill pattern to work correctly. And I'll open up the property manager, expand the linear pattern in the features command manager here and click on fill pattern to bring it up. Now you'll notice at the top of the property manager, the first option is the fill boundary. So where are we going to be putting this pattern? But before I specify that, I want to talk about the couple different options we have down here on what we're actually going to be patterning. The first option is going to be our selected feature. You can expand your flyout tree and click on that small star, for example, like you saw I had earlier. You also have the option to pattern faces or bodies. They're not used that commonly, so I'm really just going to stick to the selected feature or this create seed cut option. So looking at that create seed cut, you have the ability to select either a circle, a square, a diamond, or a polygon. And each one of these options is going to have different settings that you can put in to specify their geometry and their starting location. I'm going to start with the circle. I'll specify a diameter of 0.3 inches. And now from there, I'll click in my fill boundary and select this face here. And you'll notice it looks pretty jumbled up. At the top, you have this pattern layout option. Right now, polygon is selected, but you can also do square, circle, or perforation. And it's going to default to the center of that face that you selected. But I can also click underneath features and faces and specify a vertex. Say I click this top left point. Now this polygon or whatever layout you select is going to be based on that initial point. But I'll clear that selection and we'll work right from the center here. I'm also going to change my pattern layout to perforation to get a better idea of what's going on. So underneath there, the first option is going to be your instance spacing. Let's say I want to put each one of these circles at a half inch away from each other. And then you can specify the degrees that you're going to stagger these. So right now it's at 60. I could do zero degrees and they're going to be right on top. 90, they would also be right on top of each other. So I'll go back to 60 degrees here. Going underneath that, we have this perforation boundary. So right now it's zero inches, so it's going right up to the boundary of my face. Let's say I want to increase this to 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. And notice it's moving farther and farther away from that outside edge. Now something to consider while you're doing this, it's not actually moving away from my inside edges. If you look at these different patterns I have here, those circles aren't actually spacing themselves away. Now in instances like this, if you do want more spacing away from those edges, what you can do is go down your property manager down to instances to skip. And then you could specify exactly which ones of these that you want to move as well. So that is one of the limitations of this tool where you're going to have to skip instances at any inside boundaries. You'll also notice that we can specify an edge direction here in the property manager. Right now it's using this bottom edge. I can choose this vertical edge here and that's going to change the direction of that pattern. I also want to go over the selected feature option here. So I'll click on selected feature. I had my small star already selected, but if you don't, you can expand your flyout tree, click on that small star or whatever feature you want to pattern as well. And all those same rules still apply. As far as those margins go, if I increase them, it's still not going to move it farther away from my inside borders. So those are things that you're going to want to be aware of and to check before you accept this. You also have the same options that you would for your regular linear and circular patterns like geometry pattern, which is only going to pattern the feature itself and not the end conditions. You can propagate visual properties and set your preview settings as well. These are looking pretty close together. So I'll set that spacing at one inch this time. 
and let's go ahead and accept it and see what we got. And there we go, I've got my pattern here. But as you can see, I still have some locations where it's cutting into my model. So that would need to be checked later. But I hope you learned something today. Like and subscribe for more info and leave a comment on what you want to see next.